A royal revelation this morning. For the first time, the Queen will be going fur-free, according to Her Majesty's senior dresser. The royal family has been criticized in the past for wearing fur. From now on, the Queen will wear fake fur instead. Animal advocates are delighted with the move. An official with the Humane Society International says she's thrilled fur farming was banned by England and Wales nearly two decades ago. The Queen has many fur coats and hats that she's worn for decades. With more on this, I'm joined by CTV's royal commentator Richard Berthelsen. Richard, uh, this is making headlines, but a lot of people are saying it's a little late. <laughs> Why now? Well, I think that what's really driving this is the book that's come out by Angela Kelly, her senior dresser, and really one of the members of staff that the Queen has become extremely close to. Uh, you know, in the after the death of her mother and her sister, you know, the Queen has become really close to Angela, and Angela has been given permission to write this book called *The Other Side of the Coin*. And this really comes out of that particular book. So I don't think it was an announcement per se; it was more a revelation that came out of the book, along with several other things about the Queen's wardrobe, her makeup, all sorts of different aspects that Angela is sort of trying to correct the record, and obviously with Her Majesty's blessing. And, and talk to us about that. How could it come to be that the Queen's dresser would get permission to write this sort of, in a way, tell-all book? Well, that's really the question that's on everyone's mind, particularly in the, in the, amongst the courtiers, because the Queen has always, and her family have always frowned on staff ever speaking about things. There was a famous incident where one of her nannies, her governesses, when she was very young, Croffy, uh, wrote a book, and that Croffy was, you know, ultimately expelled from a royal mention. I mean, royal Christmas cards, the whole thing. I mean, it was really quite extraordinary. But Angela has been very close to the Queen. They really seem to share a lot. They have grandchildren. They have a good cup of tea, I think, uh, most afternoons, and have a chat about the day. And she's become. You know, one of the most close members over the years to the Queen, and she's her 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 remit has really expanded to many areas. She's written two books. She wrote one that you might recall in 2012 called Dressing the Queen about her her Diamond Jubilee year, which was very successful. But this has now come out, and she's really using the opportunity to correct the record on a few things. Remember that hat the Queen wore mm -hmm. once when she opened Parliament? A lot of people thought it was a nod to the EU. And in fact, Angela says quite clearly it wasn't. You know, the Queen does her own makeup. Uh, the Queen is no longer going to be wearing fur. She's had some of her garments redone. And of course, you know, the Queen has wore fur. A lot of the photos you showed earlier in the montage, uh, she wore a lot of that fur in Canada. Uh, it was gifted to her because the royal family has actually had a very long association with the Hudson's Bay Company. So uh, they got that fur from Canada. They wore it here. They thought it was something as a nod to the country. Of course, now we see it quite differently. Mm -hmm. And of course, I remember that book. You gave it to me and it's on my coffee table. It is. I, it's one of my most prized possessions. So now the Queen, uh, Richard, not the only one who is trying to make progressive moves in the royal family. Uh, Prince William is removing ivory from the palace. How significant is that? Well, that is a very that Prince William has said on several occasions that you know when he becomes king or as he gets more control of royal residence, he's going to have all the ivory removed that is in various um, items of furniture or decorative arts or things that have been purchased over the years because the prince is very very prominent in the Save the Elephant movement, which is you know driven largely by the the uh, you know looking for ivory by using their tusks, and he's really offended by that as are many people because it's really quite scandalous that people kill elephants for those tusks. And so he has made that comment. So, I mean, the royal family, you know, are noted environmentalists. And, you know, the Prince Philip, Prince Charles, Prince William, and Prince Harry all have great interests. And so they're looking at their own lives and the residences they will one day maintain. And they're looking to see, you know, are these consistent with our beliefs? And they have been making moves to make changes in that area as well. Richard Berthelsen, CTV's royal commentator. Thank you, Richard, for that. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Yeah.